Hi, I'm George. What I'd like to do today in this video is show you how to use or how to do the pre-use check on the Hamilton G5 ventilator. And it's not G for George, it's G for something else probably. Anyway, so it's the Hamilton G5 ventilator. This is a pre-use check and how to do it. Now, in order to do this ventilator check properly, you'll need the ventilator properly circuited. Make sure all the connections on the ventilator are in fact nice and tight because you'll have to do a tightness check that they call it afterwards to check the integrity of the external circuit. But you'll also need a plug like this for capping off the circuit or plugging it off when you need to and the adapter for that flow sensor connection N that's at the end of the patient Y. Okay, so you need these two things for doing the test. Now in order to access the test, the first thing we need to do is turn the ventilator on. So we go behind here. Let's turn the ventilator on. And you see it has that light at the top that goes on, brings up this screen. It's going to do its own little power test thing right over here or check. You can't really see it right now, but I'll zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. That. You're going to see it right away. Nice soothing kind of screen. It's got the start up words here now, and it shows you how it's starting itself up, getting ready to do whatever you want it to do. Once it do does that, it goes into this screen right over here. I'll just back this up a bit so you can see. And it gives you a bunch of options. Now, first of all, the ventilator, when you turn it on and it does that little startup check, it stays in standby. So you don't have to really do anything further than that, except maybe program the ventilator and put it onto the patient, of course, after you've done the pre-use check. Now, the pre-use check option is right down here where it says pre-use check. So to activate it, simply touch that tab. It brings you into this new menu. And there's the checks right over here. You've got the flow sensor right here, followed by tightness, as well as O2 cell. And on the right hand side, it shows three green check marks because the last time that test was done or the checks were done, they all passed. It tells you the date they were all passed as well. Now, when you are um, touching anything to make it become active on the screen and for the ventilator to do, careful where your fingers are because sometimes they're very sensitive. And even though you're going to press one thing, the other thing might be activated that's close by. All right. So what we want to do is we want to do the first test, and that's the flow sensor test. So I'm going to activate this. And when you start activating it, just follow the directions that are going to be displayed right over here, and it'll tell you essentially what it wants you to do. So we'll hit the flow sensor one. It automatically goes into the test. Up here it says calibration and progress, and then it says flow turn, turn flow sensor. So what that means is the ventilator wants us to take the flow sensor right over here on the patient Y and simply reverse it. So we'll take this careful when doing this. We'll take this flow, flow sensor out, we'll turn it like that. The ventilator automatically recognizes it and it starts doing more of its test for the flow sensor. Okay, calibrations in process. Flow test, the sensor test is still being done. It shows us kind of with this bar how far it's progressed into that protect, uh, particular test. Keeps on going, makes it sound it's like it's doing right now. Now it says again up here, turn flow sensor. So what we need to do is take that flow sensor again and simply turn it back to the original position. So there's the flow sensor right over here. I'm going to gently take this off and turn it back to the way it was before. The ventilator automatically recognizes that and continues the flow sensor check. Calibration in progress. You can see where it's at with its test right over here. And it's still working on the flow sensor. And let's see what it does. Flow sensor calibrated okay. So it is okay. And it gives us that green check mark as well as the new date as to when the flow sensor test was last checked. Now the next test we want to do is the tightness check. That's this one right over here. So you will need this adapter. You'll also need this plug in order to do the test properly. Okay, so I'm going to activate this next test, the tightness test. Let's see what it says for us to do. Tighten patient system. So all that wants us to do, or all the ventilator is asking us to do is simply tighten up the external circuit. So I'm going to take 
this adapter because I'll need it with that particular flow sensor and then we'll place the cap on it. The ventilator, as soon as I do that, recognizes it and it continue, continues on with its test. Now it says patient system is tight, 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 tight. Just like Tuco would say from Breaking Bad, but this is not an endorsement. Anyways, patient system is in fact tight, which means the circuit is uh, nice and tight. There's no real leaks in it anywhere, so it's safe to use. All right, so you can either leave that capped or leave it uncapped. I'm going to uncap it for now. Gently take the cap off so you don't break that flow sensor. And then the last test is the one that um, calibrates the oxygen fuel cell, and that's this one right over here. The test is right over here, once I can get this thing to work. O2 cell. So, oh, see, see what I mean by getting too close to the, with your finger? I was trying to do the O2 fuel cell, and it went right back into the tightness test, because I wasn't specifically right on there. So, I'll tighten the patient system again. So it's doing the, the pressure test or the tightness test on the circuit, accidentally. System is tight. Yeah, we know that because we just did it before. So I'll uncap that. Now I'm going to go with my fingers nice and carefully and hit the O2 cell one. Now it's calibrating the oxygen monitor, the uh, fuel cell for the oxygen monitor for the oxygen analyzer. Now sometimes this can take a while, especially if the fuel cell is a bit older. So uh, if it seems like it's taking a long, 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 long time to calibrate, then there's a good chance your fuel cell is getting used up. It's getting a bit old. You should, probably should look at changing that fuel cell eventually. A couple other things. Make sure that when your ventilators, after you've done the pre-use checks, are completed. If you're not using it right away, make sure that you've got the circuits themselves uh, capped off so no dust gets in them. And it's probably a good idea to put something over top of your ventilator to keep it nice and clean until it's ready to be used. But if the ventilator is being checked out just to simply go on to a patient right away, you don't have to do any of that stuff except maybe cap off the circuit if you're taking the ventilator from one area of your hospital to another area of your hospital for use. And of course, as always, make sure that you've got your wheels locked before you do your pre-use checks on the ventilators. And of course, the wheels should be locked when they are at the patient's bedside as well for the ventilator. Still waiting for that O2 cell calibration and progress to finish. Uh, it is taking a bit more time, so there's a good chance that this fuel cell is getting old and will probably have to be replaced in the next little while. But the ventilator is doing its proper checks, making sure that it's uh, fine to be used. So we'll see what happens here. Now we also have C2 ventilators as well. And the C2 is a close relative of this ventilator here, but the C2 ventilator is a transport ventilator. And this ventilator is not, per se, a transport ventilator, uh, but the C2, the Hamilton C2, is in fact a transport ventilator. So I hope that this calibrates, and I hope it calibrates in time here. Yay! Look at that. It says O2 cell calibrated. Okay. So it's good. So we passed all our three tests. Check mark, check mark, check mark, today's date, and the actual time that the test was done. So this is good to go. So once you uh, have done this test, if you want to get out of this menu right over here, you can simply hit the X. That takes you back to the original screen that you had when you turned the device on. If you want to go now and program any modes into your ventilator because you're going to ventilate your patient right away, bring up the modes tab right over here or hit the mode tab and that brings up all the choices of modes that you have the next screen so if you wanted to pressure ventilate your patient for example and assist control hit P CMV hit continue and now it brings in all the ventilation dynamics that you would program that are available on this Hamilton G5 ventilator for that specific mode of pressure ventilation okay and that's essentially how you do the pre-use check on the ventilator. I hope that you found this video informative and somewhat interesting. Uh, my name is George. Let me know if you like this video by giving me a thumbs up. If you dislike this video by giving me a thumbs down, of course, suggestions how to improve it. 
And if you get the chance, subscribe to my channel and check out all the other videos that I have pertaining to clinician patient care regarding patients in the intensive care units, emergency wards from a respiratory perspective. Hope you have a, a great day. Take care.